Welcome back today, friends. This is my part one of my two-part Sudden Homestead Q&A. I got a bazillion questions on Instagram and by email whenever I said, hey, ask me all your homesteading questions and questions about our plans and I'll just sit down and answer them for you. So I literally sat on a log in our woods and chatted it up for several hours going through all our questions. Welcome to today's part one. So I asked for sudden homestead questions and I'm going to start reading them. One mama asked, how do you have energy for all of this? Well, we have a lot of joy. We're enjoying what we're doing. This is our life. How do any of us have energy for life? Well, drink our water, go to bed, <laughs> read our Bible, uh, enjoy the journey, and then God fills us with tons of grace, strength, and ability. And it goes back to the desires of our hearts again. I was born and raised a farm girl, and I've been dabbling in all this. If we would have always lived in a neighborhood and only had a dog and didn't have friends who farm and didn't grow up in a farm and hadn't already raised chickens and hadn't already butchered some roosters and didn't already live in a farming community and live rurally, all of this would be big changes. For us, We've seen a time opportunity and we're getting after it. And my husband is home full time. This is his job to do stuff for us and to help us. So yay, Travis. Another mom asked, her account is called Encouraging Mamas. So we love that. Are you overwhelmed or do you have a personality that you like adventure? I think I like adventure. Mm -hmm. And this will not be my only project in life. We have uh, other fun adventures on the way. The Life of a Homemaker asked, did you name your kittens? So if you haven't seen it, we've gotten some extra barn kitties here recently. Yes, Daniel's kitten is named Slash. Gabriel's kitten is named Panther. Naomi's kitten is Avocado now. It had a name change. Amelia's kitten is Pancake. And with the added chainsaw noise, I think that's the only animal kitten names I can pull up at the moment. Which is your favorite animal to sit and watch? The chickens. Mm -hmm. It's easy to be a chicken mama. Another question, will you be growing fruit? I definitely hope to get melons in the ground. I got some berry bushes in the ground and then I learned I needed another one for cross-pollination. So I'll be getting additional berry bushes with the ones I've planted. Folks have asked about fruit trees and such. We will be doing those. Those are long-term goals and harvesting. I'm sure we will get them in the ground at some point this summer though. I just don't have them in the ground yet. Have you thought about getting an alpaca? You know, once we're done with our 2020 goals and once we get the cows and the ponies and some of those, then it might be like a mini llama or an alpaca or a mini donkey. Uh, little fun homestead adventure animals, sure. Someone else asked, how many acres of land do you have for all the animals? Also, do all have free reign? So we have seven acres. Not the hugest homestead, not the smallest either. I have friends who do even more than what we're doing and they're on like two acres or so. Got a couple friends who have about like the, the perfect two acres. So I feel like seven acres, it's kind of in the middle, it's in the middle. We can do a lot here and we will be doing a lot. The animals do not all have free reign, but whenever we get our front fencing done and our gate and such, I can see where we'll have times. I know it's like that at my mom's farm. You know, you'll be on the porch and the goats walk by and <laughs> different critters. So I'm sure we'll have our free reign periods. Another question. I probably already answered, are you going to get pigs? Yes, but again, I switched my pigs with my sheep. We'll be doing the sheep now and doing the pigs next summer. Another question, we live within city limits. Any ideas on how to homestead when farm animals are a no-no? I had another friend tell me that even within city limits, she knows folks who do rabbits because they don't make any noise. So rabbits is something you could potentially look into. Uh, chickens tell on you. Of course you can garden. I know there's some HOAs though that don't even let you garden. But then you could do container gardening and do those fabric bags that you can do on your porch. I know that there's resources for more um, urban homesteading and provision on the on the down low. Mm -hmm. Someone else said, what other animals will you be getting? And please get a bigger hutch. So 
Maybe she's talking about our rabbit hutch. We have a good size hutch that also has a nesting box that we have three rabbits in now and we will be expanding that. So yay, dreams come true. What does your husband think of your sudden homestead? Travis is always super supportive. Again, he's heard these ideas before. He knew we would have extra time right now. He's getting to use equipment and again, he loves this house and this property. He is super excited to do all the things and support all the things and just get us all set up for the long term here. Has homesteading changed the way you homeschool? Well, I will say that all the kids are in a race in the morning to be the first ones to get outside and do animal things. The kids love the animals. Of course, we've always had animals in various configurations. They are running out to let the chickens out and gather eggs and refresh water and feed critters. And it's just like, a, again, it's a big race. So they're loving it, they're loving it. And so as far as that changing the way we homeschool, I think it's additional layers of learning and opportunities that the kids will have now, and that'll be lots of fun. And again, right now, whether we had a deeper homestead set up or not, we would be having shorter school hours and more outside nature schooling and such. So someone else said, how do you find time to get it all done? Did you find a couple of extra hours somewhere? So again, right now I'm sitting here chatting with you about it, but other folks are working and hauling things and Travis has the scoop and you already heard the chainsaw and it is not just me doing all this. It is a big family project, but it's a whole lot of fun. When will you start milking the mama goat? So she is probably referencing our mama Nigerian. The first two goats I got was a Nigerian mama and her doling and the mama was in milk, but I didn't have my stand and I didn't know what I was doing yet. And then that's where I got Jazzy, my experienced La Mancha goat, because I figured Jazzy could teach me things and she has and now we're just in a really good routine so once mama goat is bred and once she has babies again then we will milk her we are feeding her and baby goat on the milking stand so they're getting used to it do the animals keep you up at night nope no but I, I hear the guinea hens might be noisy any time of day uh, oh okay okay it'll be fun can you hear the animals in the basement all I have in the basement, we have a cat door so our cats can come in and out. I have a storage room where currently I've got a bunch of metal trash cans now and I keep the different animal food. And then I have two brooders in there where I'm raising the rest of those laying hens. In a few more weeks, they'll be out. Do you worry about the kids getting sick from animal bacteria and fecal germs? Well, like anything, we wash our hands. My mom and I probably spent just about all day every day in the barn or in the horse paddocks or in the fields. I didn't get sick as a kid. I wash my hands. My kids wash their hands. How long does it take you to milk the goat? Can you work it so the goat is only milk once a day? For me, I've got it down to a system where it takes me about 15 minutes to milk her. I don't know about working it to where I just milked her once a day. Right now, and again, through the end of the summer, our schedule is clear so I can milk her twice a day. I also have different kids who are learning to milk and we're gonna get an electric pumper. I ordered one even back before I got mama goat and baby goat and it never came. So finally the other day I hit cancel on that and hopefully I'll get a refund. And since then, some experienced goat milk and mamas have told me of some pricier milking machines, but I would have it, especially if I get multiple goats and milk, just should be, a, should be a good process. And Jazzy, the farm she came from, she was hand milked and they had machines there. Did you explain the meat birds to your kids? So I, I have this question in various ways. We live in rural farming communities. I have friends who shop at local farms and then I have friends who have local farms and have local homesteads. And so our kids' friends, I mean, they have friends whose families do meat birds or raise cows or sheep for food for their families. It's normal and it's common. And in the Shenandoah Valley, it's not like you have two heads if you're homesteading and raising animals. So we have talked about it. Um, they know that the rabbits that we'll be raising, the baby rabbits, those will be raised and those will be for meat. They know the meat birds will be for meat. We've already discussed about raising sheep for meat. And even for when we get a cow, it would be, we would keep the mama for milk raise the baby the following year have the baby butchered for meat for our freezer and then the mama would have another baby and be in milk for that and it's just a process and again even that we are surrounded by a community who does that 
who has a family milk cow, who raises the baby for the next year and that's their family's meat, and the children are involved in the process. Our animals, just like the animals of the many families that we know, have a good life, they're raised humanely, they're butchered humanely, it feeds the family, and that's what we're doing. I'm not looking to raise eggs and raise meat and make cheese and butter and do all these things and sell it, although that is fantastic, and I know families who do. They raise enough for their family, they grow their homestead or their farm over time, and then later, they can offer it to the community. The farm where we have bought pasture-raised chickens and pig and cow before, they raise thousands of animals a year, they have their own farm store, they deliver all over the country. That's fantastic. We are doing super small scale just for our family's needs. And if there is extra, then obviously we can help feed some other people. But right now, the main goal is to get things set up as much for our family as possible. So that's about as much as I can explain it in the conversations I have had with our children, you know, it's like so-and-so's family or it's like their family. Remember when we went to their house for dinner and that lamb was lamb that they raised. But back to the animals in the basement comment, I guess now that I have mentioned that I have brooded chicks in my basement, some of the comments or thoughts or assumptions is that I have a whole farm in my basement. I have a 2,200 square foot basement and I have this cinder block room that comes out under the back deck and in that one room is where I'm brooding chicks and storing feed for right now. Ducks in the future, yes. Ducks have been ordered, ducks are coming. I was trying to stagger my orders so that we had meat birds coming, get those done brooding, get those out to the, the big dome, then get the ducks and the geese and such, then process that first load of meat birds, then get another load of meat birds, and keep rolling like that. So hopefully most of that still works out. How do you manage vet care for all the animals? Well, the really cool thing is we have a vet clinic that does large and small animals less than half a mile away. Are you able to school during this setup time? And that's where like, I, I have mentally filtered a lot of homeschooling questions. So yes, school is either being done in the mornings or the afternoons, but even though I just got done filming a video probably a month ago for my Large Family Table membership community telling them all about our afternoon routine, in recent weeks it has been a morning routine and that's where I have to be chill and flexible and go with what's working with our family and our days. Will you be making cheese with the goat's milk? Yes, and I got the milk separator thingy from someone who was selling it used. Do you see homeschooling being more difficult in this season or just a bit reshaped? I think I will go with just a bit reshaped. We have our master books that we're still focusing on finishing. We're on track for everything. Towards the end of the summer, I will order us a whole new load of homeschooling stuff for the next fresh year. Now, there are many families who order new homeschooling supplies in April. I don't usually order my homeschooling stuff until late July or August, so that's what works for me. How do your kids feel about animals that will be for food? Then we go back to, we already eat animals for food, but now we're gonna know where our animals come from. I'm not perfect, I'm the queen of the grocery store, but if we're gonna have a rewarding family adventure, we might as well know firsthand and experience where our food is coming from. We have the property to do it, we have the budget to get it set up, we have the want to, we have some basic experiences, and we have a ton of resources, so let's do this. Another question, did you ever imagine you'd be doing this? Yes. I've already done this to a certain level before, and again, I grew up on a farm. Have you been watching any YouTube channels that have helped you and are interesting? Oh yes, it's Joe and Zach Survival. So he's got meat rabbits, chickens, canning potatoes. I've watched their whole video series multiple times on their pigs and butchering pigs. Just a lot of good resources here, and they've been on YouTube for many years. They've got videos Hobo wine, how to make your own from eight years ago. Pig butchering day, the best feed for pigs. Duck hunting, I've watched a lot of their videos. And their potato planting videos, again, here they are. Butchering meat rabbits, been good videos. Joe and Zach survival. Uh, watched a lot of their videos. Daniel has watched a lot of their videos with me. So again, kids are excited. Then of course I've watched a lot on Roots and Refuge. Um, I love all of her gardening things. With my big gardens that I've had in the past, I didn't know anything about hoops. 
I didn't start my seeds beforehand. I had it plowed and I got stuff in the ground and I grew stuff and I canned stuff. Very much this summer with a little bit more research, I'm growing stuff and planting stuff and we're doing different potato methods. Uh, but if you want someone who knows her gardens well and can speak to you intelligently about it, Jess on Roots and Refuge. I, I watch and I listen and I'm encouraged and I feel like I can do this. On my list here, I didn't even put greenhouse or cold frames. I want to do those things too. I need my husband to build and pull these things together for me and help me plan them. And he is. So I've already got him a real big list and there's smoke a flying over there. He's doing it. So we'll see how far we get. So there's plenty of future adventures to come. Okay, so I was telling you, Roots and Refuge, Joe and Zach survival. Of course, a lot of you have told me Justin Rhodes and the Justin Rhodes show. I've watched a bunch of that. Um, Amy Faywell, the Faywell Family Homestead. I've watched a lot of her videos. Amy is actually going to be our expert level special guest in Large Family Table Community this month, teaching all about canning. Okay, and of course there's Weedem and Reap as far as the Nigerian dwarf goats. And then Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. I watched her videos again and again. I mean, basically she is the one who taught me how to milk a goat. And she's even got how to band a goat and turn him into a pet, goat labor, how to shave a show goat. And see, that's it. Like, I need to shave Jazzy's udders. So I'm gonna watch Blue Cactus Dairy Goats videos and I'm gonna read some articles. I'm gonna get the equipment that I need and we're gonna shave an udder. Got a video, nine baby goats born, how to milk a goat. Yeah, so I've watched a lot of her videos. And then of course, the needy homesteader, Guildbrook Farm. I mean, just a wealth of canning videos and such. So all the homesteady things that I'm sharing, I have more experience than someone who's never lived rurally or grown up on a farm before, but these ladies who've been doing this for several years now, you know, they're the experts and I am looking up to them and I'm vlogging the journey and sharing it with you. Not expert level knowledge. But then again, not scared, have had babies without epidurals, have been there when baby horses have been born, have raised chickens several times and thrown vegetables in the ground to grow. So there's something. Is Travis as excited about the homestead as you are? Yes. He is not going to be butchering the animals. Doesn't want to do that, but will totally support me and help me figure things out. So Travis is loving big equipment and projects like this. Building the pool, grinding stumps, getting buildings up. Of course, he's got a whole herd of boys helping him right there along the way. And it's great for the boys because they're learning stuff right along with their dad. We will have our 22nd anniversary this July. He is used to all my fun adventures that I lead us on. Sometimes he's got some adventures we go on as well. And you know, we compliment each other. I'm obviously the chatty extroverted type. I've told him for years how he could start a car YouTube channel and all he would need to do for it. He doesn't want to. Where I'm equipped to do certain things, he's equipped to do other things. And together, you complete me. Yes. How will you manage homeschool and all the chores? Well, in the beautiful weather months, it's going to be a shorter homeschool day. It'll be two to three hours. In the longer, colder winter months, it's going to be longer school times. It'll be four to six to eight hours, depending on the day. And again, turn it into a homeschool video. Kids aren't getting ready to leave for the school day. I'm not packing lunches. They're not riding buses. They're not standing in line. They're not going to PE. They're not going to the cafeteria. They're not dealing with other issues of other kids in school and they're not coming home with hours and hours of homework so if we have seasons where two to three hours a day of focus book work time and a shorter read aloud time that's fine and if we have seasons where we're doing four to six to eight hours that multiplied is a ton of time and we get a lot done. And then as far as chores, you know, homeschooling itself, I don't see how our schedule is going to change. We already live a life schooling at home. Chores, there are now more animal chores. We follow the same schedule that I grew up with and that my mom has always followed. And I think it's fairly standard in the farming and homesteading world. We do morning chores and we do evening chores. And then Travis, 
is heavy projects during the day and then the kids and I jump in and out of different projects as we're able. And so for chores and a lot of life, I am still a diehard. It's just my personality. You do not have to do this, okay? I'm a whiteboard mama. I have a whiteboard for our day, every day, before the kids are up, after I've read my Bible, while I'm still drinking my coffee, or maybe even having a second cup of coffee, I fill out our whiteboard for that day based on the needs and the dynamics of that day. Do we have someone come into the house that day to work, such as when we had our well things done or when we have things done to our chimney or our fireplace? Is the pool being delivered that day? Is Travis renting equipment? Do I need to run out to do something? Do we have to go to the store? Is there an appointment for a child? Every day is different. So it has never worked for me to have a pre-planned out color-coded schedule where you know every Tuesday we do these set things every Tuesday. Every Tuesday could look different for me. We also have the dynamic that I am a full-time working mama and I have a team of folks who work for me, which is what I started this vlog out chatting about. So I have those dynamics as well. But in my favor, my children have their dad home full-time. I have my husband home full-time. Again, totally different than a lot of folks, but you have to think of it as if my husband was home with a home-based business and if I was supporting him. So just a lot of teamwork. Again, I've done extensive videos talking about how the business is set up, how I make money online, how my husband helps me. Look in the description, we'll roll through that or next thing I'm gonna be rolling all through it here and not, okay, homestead, homestead, homestead. I will say where we moved from, where we lived for four years, there are farms there, there are people who homestead there, there are people who raise cows and meat rabbits and such. One of the many, many layers on moving is we adjoin the national forest and the coyotes and the bears. I mean, that's again why we had our great Pyrenees, but still, there's just reasons I did not want to homestead there. But even living there, and wherever we've lived, as soon as the weather is nice, we are outside for four to six to eight hours a day. We will not go inside tonight, probably till 8 p.m. That means we have a later dinner. And yes, that means kids might not get to bed till 10. Things are pushed later then in that respect and that's that's okay, because we, we make it up. We don't answer to a boss that dictates our work schedule. We don't answer to a school system that dictates our school hours or our school calendar. I know things are different right now with the current world events, but generally speaking, you know, we will do school when public schools have snow days. We will do school when public schools have holidays. We will do school in the summer, and then we can take off if we want to in October. We can have longer school days. We can do school in the afternoon and the evening, mm -hmm. or we can do school earlier in the morning and be done by lunchtime. We have maximum flexibility to design our life exactly how we want it to be. And I think maybe that's the key where folks have trouble understanding. I mean, for years, Travis worked 40 to 70 hours a week. And of course, he had to be out the door by six. A regular workday wouldn't be home till four or five. Had to do that Monday through Friday and then work overtime on the weekends when that was available. Then that last job he got tangled up in it was 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. basically seven days a week it was mandatory overtime and Virginia is a right to work state which actually means that if he doesn't want to work the overtime that they're giving him they can let him go he has no recourse I explained it better in other vlogs years ago when I was still living in it but anyway just know with the things we do I can literally take a blank whiteboard in the morning and I can lay out the goals for the day based on what my family needs and what our goals are for that day. That is a gift. I have worked my brains out. <laughs> I have worked very hard. My first blog that was very successful, I'm the one who was working 70 hours a week for about a year and a half to continue to grow and bust forth that thing. And of course I sold it later. It was profitable when I sold it. It was profitable because all the years I worked so hard on it. So because I've been down that road of working myself in the ground and having burnout, I have learned, again, this is gonna be about Jamarelle talking about hiring help, but mamas who are running businesses 
hear this, okay? As there are things that I get a handle on in my business, and once I understand what needs to be done in those dynamics, then eventually I can hire somebody and train them to do those things for me. One of the things I have never hired out, which is stupid, and this is gonna be a new thing I'm gonna hire out. You've all heard me talk about my email before. I have a good friend who has worked for me in various ways for probably five to six years now. She worked for me for my other site. She does different things for me now. I'm I'm going to give her my email and she's going to manage it. And that was probably the first thing I should have hired out almost nine years ago. So all that to say, back to homeschooling and chores. I had to shift myself on this log here and then I sat on a briar, that was exciting. That's where even chore list and such do not work long term for me. May just be, probably I'm sure it's a combination of our lifestyle and my personality as a mama. I write it out for the day. I like for everyone in our family to know how to do pretty much everything. And that way I can change things up. Even now, Amelia's learning how to sweep rooms. She's seven. She has done some sweeping. But last night I said, you know what? I need to have Amelia sweep because she needs to get more proficient at sweeping. Now other mamas can micromanage their households even more than I do. And maybe those mamas also aren't running a business and a household and homeschooling but maybe those mamas maybe those husbands are gone all the time so we're all different we all have different setups my encouragement to you if anything at all is to feel freedom in what works for you you don't have to apologize to anybody you don't have to answer to anybody. If you are at peace for how you're running your house and how your life is flowing, then you can embrace that and you don't have to match. And we can even be friends and not match. You can have your kids on a color-coded system. I love to see it. It just, to me, is more of a burden. But many moms need those systems because they thrive under them. I thrive with a blank whiteboard and doing a daily design. Other people, that would stress them out do what works for you. Why don't the chickens run away? So the chickens get trained to where home is. A lot of animals are like this. They learn where they sleep and which is where they feel safe. And they learn where their food and water is. That's how even Jazzy, she's over on that hill right now looking at me. She's not gonna run off because her home is there, her food, her water's there. She sees me. I'm surprised she hasn't tried to come sit on my lap right now, but she's really liking those briars, so the briars win. And so the same thing for the chickens. Now, whenever I go to train the chickens for their new coop that's gonna be happening here behind me, that will take a couple days. But it's not gonna take too long. Even our chickens, when we moved them from our last house to here, it was like one night in the new coop and they had it. Then we opened the doors, they free range during the day, and then as it starts to get evening, so they have a longer period of time that they're out now. By 7.45, 8 o'clock, they are all outside the coop doors, like they're, they're closing down for the night. By 8.15ish, they're in their coop. So myself or one of the kids goes and shuts the door for the night. With the new coop, they see us coming with a scrap bowl. So I will take the scrap bowl, uh, maybe I'll be able to vlog it. I'll walk the scrap bowl all the way down here. May not have all of them follow me, but I'm gonna dump that scrap bowl here at the new coop. Hopefully some chickens will come along. Then we'll just have to go and gather up chickens, take them to the new food, the new coop, and we will feed them and water them in that new coop and we will shut them in there for the night. Meanwhile, the door on the old coop, that's gonna be my meat bird brooder now, that door will be closed for the night. Then the next day, we will let them out to free range. And then that night, if we continue to feed them at the new coop, I'm pretty sure most of them are gonna get the point, especially with that other door closed. Oh, we ate here last night. I think this is where dinner is. And even if we have a couple nights where we're gathering up a few stragglers, it's, it's not gonna take much. Another lady says, hi, cat lady here. Can we please see the kittens? Are you planning on keeping any? So we are planning to keep all the kittens. If you haven't seen it yet, we have a new mama cat with babies. That was from another friend who had a mama cat that she knew was pregnant having kittens. And I said, because farm life, I know at our farmhouse we had a bunch of cats for all the farm life accessories. I said, we will take the pregnant mama cat because we will also keep all her babies. So we are 
are taking them to have them spayed and neutered. There's a spay and neuter clinic in our nearby city. So we will be taking them as soon as possible and getting them all fixed. But then we will have about 10 cats here at Sutton Homestead, yay. Will you add a horse? Yes, we will, but my mom will pick it. Someone said, if you hadn't moved, would you still be doing this at your old house? I had some plans early on, of course, that we would be doing this at the old house. But there were so many roadblocks again. So many things that came up at that house and in that area for us. I'm not feeling it even sitting here, no. I think again, I probably would have added more chickens. It feels right here. The other house, I'm gonna talk about it again, from the week we moved in there four years ago, was non-stop stuff all the time. For two years, we tried to make it work. And then we were like, okay, let's just move, cause we can. And then that was quite a journey, finding the right place that we both agreed on. And then there were still times we would go back and forth. Like when I filmed that vlog about uh, fixing up the house and moving to Texas, you know I was totally gonna move us to Texas. And I've talked to so many of you who live in Texas and love Texas. And I don't know, maybe we'll end up in Texas, but we have definitely run through all our options. And again, we are free to try different things and change our mind and move and buy animals or sell animals. I'm not planning on selling my animals, but I don't know. What if in two years we decide, okay, we're just gonna sell everything and get an RV and travel. That's not a desire on my heart. I know that's something that folks do, especially entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who homeschool and have that freedom. But all that to say, we're gonna do whatever we want to do. That's, that's what we're doing. Homesteading at the last location for us. We just felt so suffocated. Can I, now I'm doing house therapy again. There were just some things personally there that were suffocating. And so that helped confirm the need to move. And in all honesty, it's not where Travis wanted to move in the first place. So there you go. There's a lesson in both people be on the same page. How will you manage homeschool in the fall more work? I think you can, by the way. By fall, it's cute, because the other day I did say, well, we're doing all our building now, but pretty soon, you know, there won't be all these fences and buildings and other big projects to do. And then someone said, well, Jay Morrell, when you homestead, there's always projects. I get that. Just know big projects Travis loves big projects. He loves to do those kind of things. So again, I haven't put up any fencing. I haven't built any buildings. Travis showed the kids how to do the fencing with the goat fencing. And then if I have my story straight, it was pretty much Liam and Naomi with Travis's supervision who did the garden fence. So kids are learning all kinds of stuff with their dad. Mama is dreaming up stuff and reserving sheep Together, we're feeding and loving and enjoying these animals. Like again, those turkeys have found me again. They're there eating bugs in front of me. And so it's a big family project. So more work in the fall. My vision is, okay, it's September 15th, okay? The goats have long been here, been settled. The sheep have long been here, been settled. I've raised and processed the meat birds through the summer. By September 15th, I should have one more load, the Cornish Cross to process in October. And that's when I plan to do turkeys and probably a few ducks as well. So a lot of the systems will be in place. The garden, we will have some cold crops like I'll probably be on my second shot of peas there. I'll have some other fall things in the garden, but the big summer produce and all the big canning that goes along with that, we will have worked through. We'll see with this. This is probably at least two acres in this woods here. We'll see where we are by then in this process. But again, I'm not the only one here doing this. And I definitely think by November, when we get into our longer school days, that we'll be hunkering down for the winter and have good systems in place with everybody. Would you have done all this homesteading if the current situation in our world wasn't going on? We would have, but it would have been a slower, longer process over several years. I do think we would have gotten to it over time here. But again, I don't know about you all, but we've had time to dive into this project. Was it hard to get started with chickens the first time? So the first time I did chickens, I bought an already established laying hen flock from another local lady. Her and her husband built a coop and they had fencing and it was 35 some birds. Three of those were roosters. 
They brought them to my house with the coop and the fence and I think I paid $75 for the whole thing. It was a huge blessing and that was during that time where I was like, I'm gonna start figuring out this homesteading thing. And then with my next flock, I ordered them from mypetchicken.com. They came in the mail, the vlog is on YouTube raised them for a little bit in our upstairs bathroom, then got them outside, brooded them outside there, then got them in that new fancy chicken coop and that wonderful big yard Travis built for them. And still we let them out to free range whenever we wanted to. Then our next flock I ordered at the last house, even though our house had been off and on the market and even though we were researching Texas or Virginia and looking at other houses, I thought no reason why we've got the coop and such sitting here. Uh, let's get some more chickens going. Well, friends, as you can see, we, uh, we've we turned this into my long-winded Q&A with all the homestead and farm plans and just answering your questions and sharing what we're doing. So I filmed, I sat for over four hours, chatting it up and answering questions. So this is part one, and in a few days, we will have part two. I hope you've enjoyed it. I can't wait to chat with you in those comments, and I'll see you again very soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.